सर आई वॉज सेंग डेट द इंडियन एयरलाइंस कॉर्पोरेशन इज रनिंग एट अ ग्रेट लॉस एंड द स्कीम डेट हैज बीन प्रिपेयर डज नॉट प्रोमिस एनी इंप्रूवमेंट्स इन द अर्निंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ द एयरलाइंस कॉर्पोरेशन वेन वी आर एम्बार्किंग ऑन अवर एक्सपेंसन स्कीम द रिजल्ट मे वी डेट इफ ड्यू केयर इज नॉट टेकन इन द बिगिनिंग एंड If standardization is not introduced, the losses may mount up. Thus, more of the taxpayers' money may be wasted in the airlines corporation. Therefore, sir, I would request the honourable minister to be very careful and scrutinise all the expenditure incurred with respect to the Indian Airlines Corporation. and the aviation department and to see that there is no waste sir the honorable finance minister in his budget speech wanted great care to be taken so that there was no wastage in the government's expenditure i would in this connection like to know from the minister in charge of this will what steps are being taken by the government to see that there is no wastage in the aviation department the air india international is of course running at some profit but it is purchasing three more bogies and if the present level of travel is not maintained there is every likelihood that the air india international may change its profit into loss therefore the honorable minister has to be very careful about it then sir i come to items number 19 and 20 which relate to the ministry of education and archaeology here sir i would like to draw your attention to the directive principles laid down in our constitution where it has been stated that within a certain limited period adult education and complete literacy will be attained i am surprised to find sir that for this purpose the amount sanctioned is very meager the finances of the states are limited their sources of income are limited and what they get from taxes is mostly spent on maintaining law and order and on other items like judiciary and civil administration etc and therefore unless the central government comes to the rescue of the states in the matter of education i do not think there will be any substantial progress in this respect i am sure that the honorable minister will say that education is a state subject and it is not therefore the responsibility of the center then sir i come to the item pertaining to the external affairs ministry in this connection i would like to submit that i am very glad that the honorable prime minister has made his stand very clear about kashmir and i wholeheartedly welcome it i am very glad to find that at long last after 2 years he has stated the stand of india clearly and therefore i wholeheartedly support the expenditure pertaining to the ministry of external affairs i would like to know in this connection only one thing although it does not really come under this ministry it comes under the ministry of finance i would like to know the steps taken by the finance minister about the settlement of the loan due to india from pakistan some 2 years back the honorable finance minister had taken a credit entry of nearly rupees 18 crores as two installments 
of the loan payment by Pakistan. I should call it the pre-partition debt. But that money was not received by India and that amount is still due from Pakistan. I would like to know from the finance minister why this amount of rupees 18 crores was shown as the loan paid by Pakistan. We have done our part of the bargain because in 1950 when Pakistan wanted its share of the cash balances of the reserve bank, India immediately paid rupees 55 crores to Pakistan towards its share of the cash balance. But Pakistan has not kept its part of the bargain. Therefore, I would like to know the steps taken by the finance minister to recover the debts due from Pakistan. There are so many other outstanding amounts due from Pakistan for which the finance minister does not seem to have taken any proper steps. There is a continuous trade going on between India and Pakistan. There is plenty of transfer of funds between India and Pakistan. The Honorable Finance Minister can take certain steps so that the exchange authorities which are transforming the amounts from one country to the other country can also bring pressure and help us in recovering the amounts. Probably the Honorable Finance Minister being a lawyer may be thinking along judicial lines but I never thought along those lines. I did not suggest that we should ask for a decree from the Hague because that is quite impracticable. But there is a practical method of doing it and that is through trade between the two countries. Then I come to the subject of grants in aid to the states. Sir, more of these grants are made to the state governments. Stop.